Good morning. Welcome to Noah's Window. I'm Mary Alice Hoover. I'm back again today to give you a little thought of encouragement, maybe that will help you through your day. Just remembering our Noah's Window theme is just to keep our vision, our, our sights up towards the Lord uh, during difficult times. And we definitely are still living in difficult times. All of us have different situations we're facing and um, the wonderful things, one of the most wonderful things about God is um, He's up to that challenge. It's, it's hard to even, we couldn't even begin to address all the different things that different people are facing, but God knows and He can address those. So here's what I want to get you to think about today. I want us to think about um, enemy love. I'm going to talk about, you know, marriage love, friend love, family love, but let's talk about enemy love because that might not be one that you thought about a lot lately. Because most of the time when you think about an enemy, you think about ways to defeat them, ways to hurt them, ways to get back at them. Um, but the Bible tells us to do something a little different that maybe is a little unexpected. And in fact, I want to read a verse where Jesus is talking. So Jesus says in Matthew 5, 43, You've heard that the law says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Let that sink in just a minute. In that way, remember this is Jesus talking, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. And then he goes on to say, if you, if you only love those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. So this is a challenge. It really goes against the grain, doesn't it? If someone really sets out to hurt you, and maybe they do hurt you, Jesus challenges us to love them. Now, uh, let me be quick to point out something here because I've had many conversations being in ministry. There are those of you who have had this verse quoted to you in an abusive way. So what Jesus does not mean is he does not mean that this is a license for people to harm you, that you need to love the people who are harming you in the sense that you continue to let them harm you. So if you're in an abusive relationship, an abusive situation, please leave that. Reach out, get help. We even have some resources we can help you get out of that. That's not what Jesus is talking about here. We're talking about heart matters here. Notice he said, pray for them. Um, in fact, let's read this a little bit in the Amplified translation because here it gives us a little more clarity to what the word love means. You know, in our culture, love pretty much just has one meaning. I'm just being honest with you. It's just been so hijacked, but that isn't what the love is in the in the scripture. In fact, in the Greek, there were multiple versions of the word love. But let's look at what Jesus is saying right here. He says, but I say to you, love, and here's the clarification, that is unselfishly seek the best or higher good for your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So he's not saying have a warm, fuzzy feeling towards your enemy. He's saying unselfishly seek the best for them. Now, that's an unusual thought for your enemy. Now, I'm going to go someplace which I know I, I, I'm, 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 um, I'll probably miss something, mess something up here, but I want to give you a scenario the best I can describe it to maybe help you understand this and to not try to bore you with too much history. But if you know the story back in the Old Testament where Israel had to go into captivity, and there's, there's multiple stages of that, but when they eventually got taken into Babylon, God gave them some instructions, and among those instructions, he said, pray for the peace and prosperity of Babylon. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. These are oppressive people oppressing the Israelites who came over there. And yet God said, pray for them because if they do well, you will do well. Now, that really went against the grain. But you know what? And, and you go back and, and read this and search this out. You'll find this in the Old Testament. But... Um, uh, Actually, the Jews that did that, when they were in Babylon, they actually did well. In fact, as they did what God told them to do, they um, actually got uh, integrated into that culture and did so well that when after 70 years and God opened the door miraculously for them to go back, most of them did not go back. Not because they were oppressed, but because they were doing so well, they didn't want to go back. So I'm just saying it's an interesting principle God gives us here. It's not have a warm fuzzy towards your enemy. But here's the thing. If you want a, a total victory, if you want to see your enemy not be your enemy anymore, 
the best way for that to happen is for God to change their heart. Now, I'm assuming that as we as we are being attacked by others, um, that they would be outside the fold, people that don't understand what it is to be a God follower, don't understand how we're living our life, and they come against us, they attack us, that those would be our enemies um, in this sense of the word. But if we pray for them that God changes their heart, if we pray for them in their need, if somebody is hurting us, but we pray for them that God will help them in their difficulty, they're not expecting that. That's not the reason to do it, but they're certainly not expecting that. In fact, if you if you respond to hate and harm with kindness and caring, most of the time the situation will be diffused because that isn't the way a fight escalates. Fights escalate in the normal way. I hit you, you hit me. And, you know, I remember it because I raised boys. You know, when you have an all-out brawl and you, and you separate them, calm everybody down, isn't the first thing that everybody says is, he started it, he started it, he started it. You know, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. The point isn't who started it, and it, the point isn't who's standing on top of the mountain when it's over. The point is the greatest victory would be is if your enemy becomes your friend. And the way for your enemy to become your friend is if God changes their heart. So let's pray to that end for your enemies. Pray for your enemies. And here's the other thing. Really care about them. Care, care that, that the best happens to them. You know, even, um, even very uh, toxic relationships that you have to exit, that you have to exit because it is toxic and, toxic and harmful, God admonishes us to pray for that person, not, not to continue that relationship with them in the same way, but from a distance. Continue to pray because God can do a miracle. God saved us. God forgave us. God can rescue them and God can forgive them. And let's pray for that because that's going to be the ultimate victory. So um, I'm hoping that's something to give you something to think about today. All of us um, have some situation where we feel attacked and we feel misunderstood and we feel angry. Um, I, I think even in ministry, and this is true for anybody's lifestyle, one of the hardest things to deal with is being misunderstood when you're trying to do the right thing and yet you've been told that what you're doing is the wrong thing. You, you've been judged as far as what your motives are. That's a hurtful thing. And it makes us want to response and respond in defensiveness and maybe even attack in return. But as Christ followers, let's remember that Jesus told us to love our enemies that's a challenge that we can start the day with today. Now, our um, our worship team is going to sing a song for us today. It's called God So Loved. And part of that is, it's a great gospel song, but part of that lyric is talking about finding His mercy. And since we've all found His mercy, that's something to think about today as we think about our relationship with others. So give this a listen. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, Come to the well that never runs dry Drink of the water, come and thirst no more Come all you sinners, come find His mercy Come to the table He will satisfy Taste of His goodness, find what you're looking for Oh 
Okay, I'm so appreciative of our worship team. I just want to take a minute here to say, I hope you're enjoying that. They've done such a marvelous job, and it's been such a, a wonderful resource uh, to be able to go to the playlist. And I think they have a YouTube channel now, so I hope that you're really accessing this wonderful music. You know what? A lot of times music that you bring into your day will set the tone for your day and will redirect your thinking and just... I hope you're really utilizing that. I, maybe it's just because music is so important to me, but I hope you're utilizing that music because it'll bless your heart. It'll help you in your heart. And by the way, when we get to heaven, there's going to be lots of music. So let's practice that now. Let's just make that part of our world. So as we close out today, I just want to encourage all of us to reach out. We talked about yesterday the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to help us love our enemy, don't we? We need the Holy Spirit to help us know how to pray for our enemy. Sometimes it's hard to even sort that out uh, to know, but God knows. And uh, God has ways of, of working in someone's life to bring them to a point of change, and that's the ultimate victory if they change. So uh, let's pray about that this morning. And those of you who might be new to faith or still thinking about it, I pray that you'll reach out today in faith and just trust the Lord as your personal Savior. It's, um, it's such a simple um, ask because it's receiving a gift. And this is what Jesus has done for you. He's paid the price so your sins could be forgiven. All those times you were angry, maybe you were someone's enemy, but God has offered you his forgiveness. Not just so you'll feel better, not just to heal things, but just so you can live forever. So you can be forgiven, so you have eternity. You can look forward to heaven. And, and you have a hope beyond this crazy world we're living in right now. So I hope that if you have not already, this will be the day that you'll do that. So let's have prayer together as we close. Father, thank you so much for the privilege of sharing with brothers and sisters and those that are watching today, wherever they are, wherever they are in the world, wherever they are in their day. I pray that you'd reach out and touch each one. Bless each family of those that are listening today. I pray that the Holy Spirit would just guide each and every one in their faith journey. That next step forward, I pray that you would empower us, Lord. Empower us as Christ followers that we can love our enemy. It's so hard sometimes, Father, and yet we know we have enjoyed your mercy and your love. And it's because of your forgiveness that we can do this. We can love our enemies because you loved us when we were unlovable. Help us even today, whatever situation we're dealing with, maybe it's on a broad scale, maybe it's a group that seems to be attacking us, but I pray that you'd help us as cross followers to even today pray for those that are coming against us. Pray that their hearts would change. Pray that they would see truth, that they would have the veil lifted of the deception that maybe they are following. Lord, I just pray that you would do what only you can do, that the Holy Spirit would work in a supernatural way, that you would have your will and way, and that those that seem to be our enemies, that they would be changed and that they would see their needs met and their hurts heard. And I just pray that you would work even today in our lives and in their lives. I pray that you would guide our country in such perilous times. Lord, we need you. We need you, Father. And we have, we have a heavy burden of sin. We're guilty, Father. We are, as a country, so many things. We, we've rejected you in so many ways. And it's apparent, Lord, that we uh, it's time for us to get on our knees in our heart and just come to you humbly and pray that you forgive us as a country for all the ungodliness, all the horrors that we uh, have brought about on ourselves. And come back, Father, please come back. Come back to our main street. Come back to our schools. Come back into our lives and change us back in a country that loves you and that serves you. Heal our land, Lord, I pray. And I pray for us as we just face our day today, whether we're taking care of children or, or we're just working in a job, whatever it is we're doing, I pray that you would be with us in a way that we would feel your presence. I pray that you would be with us in a way that the Holy Spirit could speak through us when opportunity arises and that we would act in such a way that people would look at us and say there's something different about them. That supernatural power, that's that's not normal for giving their enemies. What is it about that person? Lord, bring that into our lives and into our actions. We ask you even this day that we would represent you in that way for your glory and for your honor. And for those who... This is the time that they are ready to just reach out to you in faith. I pray that you would give them courage and faith to say, Yes, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need that gift that Jesus provided for me, that forgiveness of my sin. I, I want to be looking forward to heaven. I want to be part of God's family, and I won't have to worry about what's going to happen when I die. 
I pray that they would have that courage and faith to just say, yes, Lord, I want Jesus to be my personal Savior. Help them to do that today. And we're going to thank you for who you are, all that you've already done, all that you are doing and you're going to do even tomorrow. We're trusting you because we know that you are taking care of us. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you just prayed with me, if you just trusted the Lord as your personal Savior, we would love to hear from you. If you would text PRAYED to 97000, we want to reach back and give you some materials. We have a book and a Bible we'd like to share with you. We'll send that to you free of charge and maybe answer any questions that you have. So please let us know. We would love to rejoice with you and to partner with you as you start your faith journey. And if you want to just give us some feedback, let us know you're out there listening to Noah's Window. We would love to hear from you as well. If you would text TALK to us to 97,000. We love hearing from you. I have gotten to hear so many sweet uh, messages from people who are watching Noah's Window, and we share those around. I know everybody that's been sitting here has worked hard to be a blessing, and, and it's wonderful to hear back from you that you're watching and that this is helping you. So hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. God bless.